All right, this is computer security, and we're going to learn all kinds of information. Okay, what about some of these scenarios? In June, it says children are out of school, airports are filled, rolling power outages, airlines kicked off flight control, New York Stock Exchange having a major crash, 911 service goes down, all email and telephone systems fail. Kind of sounds like Obama, doesn't it? Whatever. Had to include that for you, dude. Had to. <laughs> all happened in 1997. Basically, it was an exercise where they simulated all this happening. Wasn't that for the 2000s? It was something yeah, somewhere around there. But, I mean, I don't talk about it in here, but, you know, the Stuxnet, Stuxnet virus? Yeah. You all know what that one is? For the longest time, you know, we didn't know who did it. It was actually the U.S. who did it. But, you know, it's just amazing all the different stuff that can be done out there. Okay? All right. We're vulnerable. How about an electronic Pearl Harbor? I mean, you kind of think we're having this stuff now. You know, Google went down. Did you all see the news the other day? Google went down for two minutes. I think it was, and 40% of the net traffic was gone. Now, if you look, Google went down for two minutes, and during those two minutes, 40% of all internet traffic was gone. It's like crazy. So they never did say why it went down. Everything went down all at the same exact time. So they don't know if it was planned or what. Okay? We are a hyperpower. Our budget is more than anybody else's. We'll see more about that. We have a very large infrastructure here. Uh, does anyone think the U.S. is like number one on technology? Anybody? We think we are because, you know, we're, we're the best. We're not. We are so far behind. Uh, I did a cruise over in um, the British Isles area. I had perfect 4G signal at the time. It wasn't LTE at the time. 4G signal the entire time. The only time I would lose it was when the cruise ship would pull into port and they would uh, they blocked the signals at that point because a lot of the, the actual port locations. But when, as long as we weren't directly inside the port, I had perfect cell phone signal the entire time. I don't care what, in a taxi ride. I can't even keep the cell signal driving to Choctaw. You know the I-40 going up the hill past Anderson Road? Yep. Man, that sucks. <laughs> that area yeah, there. It, it's terrible because the, the tower's right on the other side and you lose it coming up the hill, yet other places it's so much better, okay? We're an open society. We let everybody in. Pretty much what it is. Pretty much what it is, okay? All right. I've updated some of these expenditures. Look at the amount of money, okay? 2012 to 2009. Now, we've spent less. We went from 45 to 39%, but still, that's a lot of money compared to what other places spend. I was in the military. Anyone do military in here? Remember a couple of you? Um, for a while there, I was a resource advisor where I had to spend the money and keep track of it all. I still remember it was, um, what's the last day of the year? Uh, is it October 31st or September 31st? Whenever the, the last day of the, the fiscal year? So well, end of September. Yeah. Okay. I was over to supply and we had to spend this money. And the commander's like, you will not leave until you spend every penny. So I was calling the commander and says, hey, you know, Colonel Martin, you know, here's how much we got. He says, just buy something. I'm like, I said, what do you want? He goes, hell with it, buy a refrigerator. Buy a refrigerator for everybody. <laughs> so we literally bought a refrigerator for every single office. And it was like, we just went, okay. Because you got to get rid of the money. It was, Could you put the <laughs> back then we did. We back at Tinker, I think it was once a quarter on a Friday, they closed down Building 230, bring out the barbecue grills and the beer. Try doing that stuff now. It ain't happening. But military expenditure, still got a lot, okay? It says China's recognized the importance of cyber operations as a tool for warfare. We'll see more picture about that. But obviously, China is getting into this. North Korea is getting into this. A lot of other countries are getting into this. We're being targeted by a lot of people, okay? okay. This was, uh, what year was that? I catch this one on? This is a couple of years ago, but a news channel actually showed this system here. We actually select your target when you say attack. That's basically what this says, attack. With attack canceled, and you select your target off a list, and it just goes out and takes it down wherever it is. So it's pretty crazy stuff. But yeah, the, the link's on there. You can go watch it if you want. How about all this stuff? You all notice how everything's made in China? Mm. Don't you like even our flags are made in China? Virtually everything, every, I mean, the darn tablecloth we had for the cybersecurity thing out there this week, someone was nice enough to dump taco sauce all over it. So I was looking how to clean it. Made in China. Every darn thing is made in China. They make snow in China. See, they make stuff here. So China, 
basically makes everything. And uh, I went to a um, conference in Tampa. It was um, had the NSA, the FBI, DHS, a lot of big organizations were there. And I was there because of our grant. And they gave away, actually it's on my desk somewhere, it's a little tape measure. It was a tape measure that had a pen, had a little post-it note, and it put on your belt and everything. They gave away these to everybody. And naturally, you know, when you go to a conference, what do you do? You take all the free stuff. You always take the flash drives and whatever they give you. But, so, I'm at a conference with all these big wigs, director of the FBI, all these people there, we're all taking these home with us. What would have happened if they had put something inside that tape measure? Because you know that sucker got into a lot of offices. Yeah, a lot of people kept it at home, but a lot of people brought it to work. I mean, I got a better one at home, so I left, brought it here. But, but yeah, we don't know. There's all that stuff. Dr. Shimoy spoke, oh, what, a year ago now, about how on um, ATM machines, they had an issue, they had found ATM machines that during the manufacturing process, someone had actually gotten into the ATMs during the process and embedded a scanner, or basically a swiper and a keyboard reader below the system. <coughs> so when the ATM's installed, it's built in. Pretty scary stuff. So you never know. Okay. All right. Why are we envied? Well, we have a very large middle class. It's going down quickly. Ain't that right, Scott? Mm -hmm. Okay. Let's get, we're trying to level it out, but see, he says he's a Democrat, but he's not. He has money. He has a job. Travis, you're a Republican. So, all right. <laughs> I give such a hard time. Okay. He has a job and money. He has savings. And he's not asking for a handout. So, dude, you're... Uh, we, if we can move on, that'd be great. <laughs> okay. Okay, China is basically saying they need to raise their middle class. A lot of people want to be like us. Okay. Cyber attacks, insiders. What do you think? Who do you think is the biggest threat out of all this stuff? I would say insiders. Because they have access to it. I've been working here at Rose State for 13 and a half years now. If I was a bad guy, wouldn't that be the perfect location? I mean, I have access to grades. I have access to all kinds of stuff. Where do you get a job at Walmart? Pretty quickly <coughs> to give you access to some of their systems. Uh, it's just amazing what insiders have. To do. How about working at a bank? I had more access. Yeah, you, here you did probably. Yeah. Yeah, I could get. I, I doing Christmas decorations. I was oh. in the president's office. Yeah. Well, how about the cleaning crew? We had an issue a couple oh, years ago. <laughs> Where on campus, projectors were being stolen left and right, dozens of projectors. And it turns out, it wasn't the cleaning crew, but it was the guy in charge of the cleaning crew. It was totally fake name, fake everything. He was coming in, getting the people cleaning, he'd go to a different building, steal a projector. Must have been a Republican. Yeah, uh, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but it was, it was amazing what they were stealing. Uh, what, two summers ago, I was in uh, Houston for some training. And I came back, and we had a big old lending library of books there for a while. And this computer security book, which is the book for this course, by the way, is uh, pretty expensive. But all of those were stolen. All the operating systems books were stolen. They were 80 bucks a base. And we could never figure out who did it. They were all gone. My entire shelf was empty. And all we could see on the security camera was the cleaning crew. There was a guy always walking around with a backpack. And he'd go into my office. And come back out, go in my office, come back out. We never could roll, because there was no camera looking at my shelf inside my office. But they would go in room 129, the corner of the room, and stay in there for hours. Does anyone know why? It has an outside door. It has an outside door. So what they do is they go in that room, hop in their cars and drive home, come back in the morning right before quitting time, pretend they've been here all night long. But it's an amazing amount of stuff. Uh, I used to have... Uh, stacks in my office, chips, you know, cookies, candy bars, soda, frozen stuff in my office because that's why I had the refrigerator, refrigerators and all that stuff in there. And I would try to restock it every night before I went home. And what I charged was I paid for it. So it's really there was no markup. If I bought it for 25 cents, I sold it for 25 cents. But I never paid for this stuff. <coughs> if I took a soda out, I'm not going to put money in there. But I was losing money big time. It's like, you know, I should at least be pretty close to breaking even on this stuff. Well, I put a camera in there one day. Sure enough, security walks in, grabs the soda, and leaves. 
Comes back in a few minutes, grabs a burrito and a candy bar and leaves. So I post a big old sign on my door, Rose State Security is a thief. So they called me first thing Monday morning. <laughs> they said, would you mind removing the sign on your door? <laughs> but they did. They fired the guy immediately. And then the funny thing was, oh, yeah, the cleaning crew was like, yeah, he's always in the conference room watching videos all day long and eating chips and stuff. We didn't know where he got the food from. Don't think to tell that to anybody. <laughs> but the fact was he was an insider. He had the keys to the whole entire campus, and who knows what else he was stealing from around here. Other facts, like Ed Wolf, he's all upset. He's like, I'm positive I brought soda in. Now, a couple of days off, and now it's all gone. So, insiders, that's the biggest issue. But they're not the only ones. Script kiddies, people who know just enough to be dangerous, download a script off the web to do something with it. Okay? Hackers, they want to take over your computer. And we got a book about that right there. Okay? Hacktivists, hacking for a cause. Okay. <coughs> Organized crime. Pretty much everybody uses computers nowadays. Everybody does. <coughs> Could be a competitor. A uh, movie called Paycheck. Um, who, was in it? who was in Paycheck? Come on. You reverse engineered all the stuff? <coughs> if you haven't seen it, you need to watch it. It's really good. Ben Affleck was in it, I think. Really good movie. It's called Paycheck. He reverse engineers. He would get something from a competitor, reverse engineer it, change it up a little bit, and sell it. And all, you know, if you ever, you know, I don't drink soda. I drink, I don't even, how many years since my last soda? But I always noticed it was like Diet Coke with lime, Diet Pepsi with lime. Diet Coke with this, Diet Pepsi with this. It's like there's got to be some sort of collusion going on because they all have the same stuff going on at the same time. Okay. Could be cyber terrorists. Could be hostile governments. Are we a hostile government? What do you think? Yes, we are. Yeah. We, we took down the Stuxnet. If you don't know how that worked, the Stuxnet virus took down the Iranian nuclear power plant. Their system was called an air gap system. It is not connected to the outside world at all. So the U.S. put a bunch of these Stuxnet virus on a bunch of flash drives. Threw them all over Iran. Tons of them. Sooner or later, someone picked one up and stuck it into the nuclear reactor system. And it got into the centrifuge system where they were spinning all the Iranian ore, I guess it is, or something. And it basically told it it was spinning at the wrong speed. And it made it mad. <laughs> and it basically screwed it up. Took them years behind now. Okay? Could also be friendly governments. Okay? All right, we're vulnerable. Since during the Israel Gulf War. Israel is a friendly government. What now? They're friendly and. They're, I, would, I would say that pretty much every government is a friendly and a bad guy. Yeah. They all are. Can you think of one country that's always good or always bad? No. Okay. Well, I was thinking that maybe Israel would be a friendly government because they're so far behind, they really don't have the technological <laughs> they could be. ability that, that to, really do could be. Yeah. to do the, anything. They got camels out there, and that's about it. But, uh. All right, it says, during the Gulf War, Dutch hackers stole information by the U.S. from DED computers and tried to sell it to the Iraqis. He thought it was a sting operation, but it was actually real. He wouldn't box. He thought it was an operation to go after him, but it was actually real. Okay. The analyzer hacked into the Pentagon. He hired two California teenagers, broke into the computer room, trained them on chat rooms, and broke into the computer systems. Okay. 1999, it says U.S. Air Intelligence Agency's computers were hit by a coordinated attack launched uh, from several sources, including Russia. Okay. I used to run an ISP for quite a few years. Now, I tell you, spam was one of the biggest issues. So where do you think the largest population of spam comes from? Here. Uh, Asia Pacific network is very bad. Russia is very bad. Amsterdam area is, oh my God, bad. But it was, it's amazing how much crap comes out of some of these other countries. It's pretty bad. All right. What about Nigeria? There's a lot of scammers out there. Yeah, but I don't. Yeah, they suck too. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Okay. How about? Making of the iPhone. It's made of what? Foss, not Foscam. Fox something or other, isn't it in China? Foscom in China. I think those jobs will ever. <coughs> Actually, they say they're moving back. No, they're not. They are. So I don't know if they'll never come here, but that's just made in a communist. You know, China is a communist. Hopefully, you all realize that. You know, China was actually owned by the, uh, the was it England for a while? Because they, 
lost somebody. It's crazy some of the stuff you learn about that stuff. But what's going to happen with all this stuff? We don't know. It's just amazing on all the stuff going on. Okay. And the way they treat the workers over there is atrocious. Okay. It says Android is now the worst platform for malware. You can't see the link. But I was talking to James Finch. Anyone know James Finch? Yeah. He's actually a student in our program. He's actually the special agent in charge of the FBI here in Oklahoma City. He was in my office with, last week. He just stopped in one night was talking to me. And they're evaluating a new cell phone for the government. What do you think they're going to go with? Apple. Go with Apple. Because BlackBerry's dead. Sorry to tell you, y'all can call Shalon Simmons and tell her BlackBerry is dead. It was even on yesterday. They're trying to find someone to buy the company. Android, they can't secure the darn thing. And they can't use a device that can't be secured. So it's just amazing. Okay. But yeah, Apple's probably the safest at the moment. iOS is the, you know, Android's the worst. Okay. Cyber towers could be internet, could be telephone, <coughs> wireless, power grids. Anything. China didn't have the China access their power grid and just looked around. And yes, they did. <coughs> well, it, they all they would have to do to bring America to its knees is hit, yeah. no, just hit all the cell towers. Yeah. Take out the cell towers, and we're all screaming around going, <gasps> What are we going to do? Yeah, it, it's what? crazy. I mean, we're so reliant on everything nowadays. Okay. Does it, I mean, in here still have a home phone? <coughs> Anybody? Really, that many of you still have? Do y'all really like paying that much money? <laughs> oh, well. Get a free fax service, dude. Fax away, totally free. Done. But uh, um, it's just amazing. FAA computer system. Okay? State and local government system. <coughs> Anything. There's lots of targets out there. Okay. You know, uh, what's that? Uh, um, oceans... 27, I don't know what number they got to, they were doing the EMP and all that other stuff. I mean, yeah, those are movies and it's a lot of far-fetched stuff, but there's some reality in a lot of this stuff, okay? Okay, how about software, hardware, all this? I mean, do we make any hardware here nowadays? <coughs> there's nothing made here. We make software here. That's iffy. I'd say we make some, but not all that much here anymore. We make people here. Yeah, we make some, but not as much as China. <laughs> okay, some of the goals we're looking for. I mean, you'll see these three goals. If you've had some other security class, you should see in all of them. Confidentiality, integrity, and availability. It says, confidentiality, assets are available only to authorized people. You're authorized, you can access it. You're not authorized, you can't access it. Easy enough. Integrity, you hope it's the right stuff. Okay, what else? Seems like legally. <laughs> and then availability is a big issue. What happens when something breaks? What happens when the internet goes down? You get the return key or shit. Yeah, and you're like, what the hell is going on? But so much stuff relies on the internet now. Man, Rose State, the internet goes down. Enrollment, HR, payroll, everything is done through the internet now. It goes down where you might as well go home. Well, a couple semesters ago, it went down for a while. And Steve was freaking out. And it was just our area here. So I ended up just tethering my iPhone to my computer in my office. Mm -hmm. And Steve was in my office enrolling people because there was no other way to do it. It's just amazing. We're so reliant on this stuff nowadays. I mean, you know, holidays, you know, Christmas, Thanksgiving. Does anyone kind of freak out when all the stores close? <laughs> That's me. It's like, I you know, you, started to. Yeah. you don't need Walmart until they're closed. <laughs> then you need something. It's like, darn it, I need a whatever. But availability is a big issue, okay? And also, you can think about availability as people. What happens if you need to get something done and they're not there, okay? And, you know, I, I made a joke the other day about how Rose State has nothing but bottlenecks everywhere. We ordered a MacBook Pro from Apple, shipped from China, <laughs> and as of Friday, it had been two and a half weeks since it arrived at the physical plant. And it hadn't made it from the physical plant to our building as of Friday. They're that was, still playing with it. Yeah, that was two and a half weeks. So it got to, from China to that <laughs> building over there in the corner quicker than it got from that building to our office. Isn't that crazy? It's just, 
And, you know, when they call, when, when Doug Conine goes on vacation, guess what happens? Nothing. Literally nothing. <laughs> and that's pretty much how it, but it's not just Rose State. It's a lot of places. They, you know, someone's not there. I'm sorry, I can't do anything for you. It's, it's tough, okay? Major threats, interruption, okay? Asset is lost, unavailable, or unusable. Whoop, your phone service has been interrupted, okay? Interception, someone's got it. They might be manipulating it. They're basically listening in on it. Modification <coughs> is more of the manipulating. I got your paycheck, and I'm changing the number of zeros, that kind of stuff. I will tell you, on these slides right here, these three and all these 100% will be on your test. Okay, maybe all three of them. Okay. All right, uh, how about this one here? Florida high school students modified a probation officer's check-in number to a 1-900 sex line. And you think they got off? No, they got in trouble because they had to call the probation officer. Well, they couldn't. Well, so you should have come out another way today. Okay. Fabrication is totally counterfeit. We got an email today, Larry Barrett, one of our legal teachers. He's a lawyer. Great guy, great in law. But you know how much he knows about technology? No, there's like, I think it's, it's less than zero. It's the other. <laughs> no. But Larry came to me this morning. He's like, uh, come look at this email I got. It said he bought a copy of Microsoft Office 2013 for like $127. Click here to claim it. But he knows better, so he asked me about it. I'm like, no, 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 we get that for free. You didn't buy it. Then Arlene came in about two hours ago and said, did you get that email about Microsoft Office? I said, no, but Larry did. Well, it's going around the whole campus. They're sending it to all the people on campus like we just bought an upgrade. So, totally fake. Totally fake. All right. Cyber attacks. Okay. Malware infection. Now, look at the percentages here. 2005 to 2010. These numbers are actually as in November 2010. So, that's almost 2011. Look at the amount of malware. There's quite a bit of it out there. Bots, zombies... Password sniffing, eh, that stayed about the same. Financial fraud, you know, we see 9%, but that's still quite a bit. Okay, these all came from the FBI and CIA survey, by the way. Website defacement, exploitation of DNS servers. Does anyone wonder how many main or core DNS servers there are out there? 13. There's 13 of them. Did you know, was it a couple of years ago, they took out an 11 of them and they still function correctly? But, you know, it's a big issue. You take that DNS server, you can have a big old issue there. Okay. Web clients, you know, web browsers is a big issue. So many people get stuff infected, okay? Systems penetrated by outsiders, laptop and moldable hardware theft happens all the time. We were having a Christmas party two years ago at the used to be bowling alley on Sunny <coughs> Lane, Sunny Lane Bowl, or whatever. And Roy had his laptop in someone's back seat. Someone busted in the windows, took his laptop, and ran. So, just scary stuff, okay? Just a lot, lots of stuff out there. National trends, it says, cyber criminality is becoming more advanced and targeted. Heck, because people are getting smarter. <clears throat> they are really figuring out how to do all this stuff. It says, the threat of digital espionage is increasing. And yeah, <coughs> everybody has a computer. Ill illegal use of internet po for political reasons. Dr. Snowy actually went to California for a, uh, he was brought there by the governor and uh, to look for Voter fraud in, you know, for online vote, uh, not online, but um, electronic voting. He found big issues where they could do it. Oh, hush up here. Okay. Just lots of, uh, of issues. <clears throat> IT security is becoming more difficult. You all agree with that? Yeah, there's always something new. And if you're secure today, does that mean you can be secure tomorrow? Not necessarily. Probably not. Okay. There's many initiatives for IT security, but no real coordination. There's a D in there, you just can't see it. Okay. <laughs> so the cyberspace is on the rise of the fifth, dom fifth domain of armed forces. Heck, isn't Tinker now the cyber something or other? Mm -hmm. Cyber command, I think. Yep. So it's pretty crazy. We can't live without information and communication technology. Do you all agree with that? I, you know, I've been watching Duck Dynasty lately. I'm assuming some of you have seen that. You know there's the Duck Dynasty <coughs> cruise? We're, we're going to try to go on that one. July next year. It's sold out already. There's a Duck Dynasty what? Cruise. Oh. Out of Miami. There's a four-day cruise. What is it with it's you it's and cruises, happy. man? Seriously. Dude, I haven't been on a cruise in like they a month. They make it happy, happy, happy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's been like a month. I, was on a, I didn't go on a cruise in August. And I'm not going on one until November and then December. 
But um, we can't live without this stuff. I, I watched that show, and it's like, how do they live without computers? Did you already book yours? I bet you did, didn't you? Um, I was going to, but I'm, since it's only a four-day cruise, I didn't book it yet. Since it's only four days, I'm trying to book a cruise either before it or after it. So I don't want to fly to Miami for a four-day cruise. Why don't you just move to Florida and live on a boat? No, because I can go out of Houston, too. <laughs> all right, how about vulnerabilities on computer? These are all from Kaspersky's labs. There's quite a few. A lot of vulnerabilities on your computers. Top vulnerabilities, I mean, 2012. It's got more than ever. <coughs> and, you know, a big issue here is, what do y'all, do y'all have antivirus software? Hopefully. And hopefully it's not the one that came with your computer. Because those expire in 90 days. So many people buy a computer, come to a free McAfee whatever, Norton whatever, for 90 days, and they never renew it. It's never updated. Virus scanners are signature-based, which means they have to know about the threat. If you never upgrade your antivirus, guess what happens? You're infected. Microsoft has a free one called Microsoft Security Essentials. Free for life. Yep. Download it and use it. Okay? Look at this. I thought this was amazing. I put this on here this weekend. Huh. Adobe Flash has a few issues. Do you agree? Yes. <laughs> iTunes, Oracle, Java. That's a lot of problems. <laughs> a lot of issues out there in software. Oh, oh look, extremely dangerous software flaws. Oh, Oracle, Java. Imagine that, Adobe Flash, Adobe Reader. Yeah, but that, that green line almost fits on that one. Okay. <laughs> All right, browsers. What's your favorite web browsers, anybody? Firefox. All right, let's look at this. This is from W3 Schools. 2002. Internet Explorer was there, pretty much. 2005, Internet Explorer still kicking butt. 2010, uh-oh, Firefox is starting to take over. What do you think is going to happen? Firefox going to dominate. Safari Safari's going to blow up. 2011, uh-oh, Chrome's coming up. Internet Explorer's dying fast. 2012, ooh, Chrome's winning. Oh, 2013. Doesn't that suck? And, you know, I like Chrome, but there's so many things I use that will not work with Chrome. I teach for another school, and they will, they even tell you, don't use Chrome. It will not work with it. Yeah. I'm using Firefox now because it seems to be, I like Safari, but again, there's a lot of things that won't work with Safari. It's like, what the hell? I the, like the fact that Chrome took the because that means everybody's going to be writing that for Chrome, not Firefox. That's true. That's true. <laughs> um, what was I going to tell you? Um, an issue I got with Firefox, they update it like every 18 minutes. Yeah. Y'all noticing yeah. that? Yeah. It's like, here's your 30-minute update. <laughs> Reinstall, please. <laughs> and it's not would you like to. It's all we already done did it. Yeah. The moment you restart, you are using the new version. It's like, what in the heck? Yeah, it is, it, and, and they go from like version 9 to version, version 27. Then the next week it's like 34. It's like, where are you getting these numbers from? It's crazy stuff. Okay. Why cyber attack? Easy, available, can be done from anywhere. Can be done remotely. Okay. Could be asymmetrical, which we'll talk more about that type of stuff. Could be a diverse attack. Okay. Force multiplier. We could have lots of people all over the world doing this. Okay. Okay, we could have pure cyber attacks as if there was none prior to 9-11. We could have combination. What if we had a bombing in on 9-11 all at the same time? That could be an issue. Okay. What if we have a 9-11 with an earthquake? There's a movie out there called Gasland, G-A-S-L-A-N-D. Man, it's uh, talking about all the natural gas. It's very interesting. And you wonder why we're having all these earthquakes around here. Okay, we could have a weapons of mass destruction along with a cyber attack. A lot that of guy's stuff. That a Democrat, there. you know. What? That guy's a Democrat, you know. I guess it's Not all Democrats are bad. <laughs> Just, I'd say 98, <laughs> 99. <laughs> okay, hell, they're all bad. Yeah. Okay. Republicans are filled with greedy people. What happens if train derails with toxic chemicals? And There's so much stuff that could go on, okay? Okay, what if we have the earthquake in San Francisco? 
What if it all happened on the same day and the systems fail? Just lots of stuff. Okay. How about voice over IP phones? We got one right there. Did anyone else use voice over IP phones? Man, it is so simple to capture anything on there. You can you can install Kane on your machine. Then the moment if you have Kane running, every single call in or out is automatically recorded. So I can walk into my secretary or the dean's office, install Kane, minimize it, because Kane has no icon on the toolbar. And I could be recapturing every single phone call he makes or receives. Pretty crazy stuff. Uh, how about, what about the SQL Slammer virus? I know a lot of you didn't have stuff to worry about that, but there's just lots of issues with all this kind of stuff. How about harm? This is occurs when a threat is realized, something actually happened. A risk is the possibility. Something could happen. There's a risk of a virus out there. A harm is after the virus actually happened. Okay? The control or countermeasure that could be an air virus offer or something to help prevent or reduce it. Okay? We have something called adequate protection. It says, computer items must be protected only until they lose their value. A prime example of this is I was uh, in the military. I was what's called an ADPE custodian. Automated data processing equipment custodian. Everything that was used for data processing, they inventoried. Remember those old IBM Selectric typewriters with the balls that would jump? Cost like $3,000 a piece. What thing happened when we started getting computers? Awesome. They literally started throwing them away. The colonel came to me, and we got to track down all these typewriters. They're gone. They literally threw them away. And they were pissed. They wanted people to be paying two and three thousand dollars a piece for them. He it was missing this point. There's a point where those typewriters are not valuable anymore. But I don't know, but some of the stuff I see for sale online, it's like, seriously? The guy was selling old beer glasses. I saw online, I'm like, seriously? I throw those away. But oh well. Okay, they must be protected to a degree consistent with their value. So I have a computer down here on the floor, including monitor and everything's right about a thousand bucks. So I need to go buy a $10,000 antivirus system for it. No, it's a waste. Okay? The principle is effectiveness. Controls must be used and used properly to be effective. Buying an antivirus software and leaving it in a box is not a good idea. Um, St. Philip Neary School, right up the street, I took care of the computers for a long time. When I first started taking care of them, their computers were really old. I'm like, man, you really need to think about replacing these machines. This is on the church side. And they're like, oh, yeah, we already got new computers. I'm like, what? They had bought computers three years earlier. We're still in the closet because they haven't got around to installing them yet. So I finally said, you know what? We need to start using these new computers. If we... And they sure not. They were brand new in a box, never opened. But I said, but now they're three years old already. So, you know, they didn't last that long because they were getting outdated as well. It's like, you know, this whole effectiveness, you know, you need to have the right stuff and use it when you get it. Like our Rose State email system, our email server is 10 years old. They're supposed to be upgrading it today. Actually, it was going to be done by yesterday. Then they said the first of the week, but now they're working on it today. It's still not done yet. But how about the weakest link? You ever seen that show, The Weakest Link? It's kind of, yeah, that show, is it still on? Oh, okay. So security can be no stronger than its weakest link. We can have the best security, but leave the doors open and have a thief for a cleaning crew. What good is all that? You know, pretty bad stuff there. And an idiot for a secretary. Well, yeah, an idiot for a secretary, exactly. Okay, we could use encryption, which we're going to cover a majority of in this class. We could have software controls, hardware controls, physical controls. we got a door here that's locked, hopefully. It'd be nice if it was. Okay. Does anyone ever have an alarm system in the house they forget to arm? I now arm mine religiously, and uh, I had a big issue with mine was I'd forget to close my garage door. Like, I'll come in at night, and, like, I'll close the garage. See, I actually use my garage for a car. I don't know if you guys do that. I actually park in it. And, yeah, it's kind of weird. I actually have two cars in my garage. But the funny thing was, I'll shut the door and walk in the house. But sometimes the cat will come in behind me, and she'll trip the door, and I'll forget about it. Then the cops in my neighbor come knock on my door about 3 in the morning, tell them my garage door's open. So now my alarm system notifies me. If, if it's my garage is open for 20 minutes or more after 8 p.m., it notifies me, which is kind of nice. So. But uh, physical controls, policies, and procedures, kind of important stuff there. Do you have a password policy? 
Okay, Rose State, y'all know what your password is for your birthday. I did submit the official paperwork, what, last week, Roy, I think, to get rid of that finally. It is 100% in direct violation of FERPA. I mean, no questions asked, totally in violation. So, I'm going to be very, everybody's going to be mad at me. Well, they're already mad at me. I can't find it, change it, and it wouldn't let me change it. I went up to IT, and I'm like, why can't I change this? this you thing? can't. You know, I, yeah. You can't. And the funny thing is, even if you do change it each semester, it reverts back. And even if your account's removed, it defaults back to your birthday. It's like, wow. So you can change it for a short period of time, but it does revert back. But policies and procedures, I mean, you got procedures in place. Rose State has a non-smoking policy since August 2011. Oh. Okay, <laughs> hold on, hold on a minute. We went to a physical plant the other day to see good Doug Conine. Amazing, somebody was in there smoking like a chimney, ash tray all over his desk. Oh, in, you mean in the warehouse? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's still Rose State. It's still Rose State Campus. It does not say no smoking on campus unless you're inside the physical plant warehouse. It doesn't say that. Actually, that's clause 28. Don't worry. I'm going to do something about it, but I get to wait a little while so he doesn't know it was me. We've been over this. You're back. Because you know that whole bottleneck issue I talked about? That's a large one. And if he gets mad at me, you think three weeks waiting on a package to come from there is long? I'll probably wait in three years. All right. Just go talk to Dr. Oh, she doesn't really like him anyway. Oh, it's, we're working on it. Okay, so effectiveness control. Okay, awareness of a problem. Do we have problems? If not, well, I mean, if you do have problems, you need to let people know about them. Likelihood of use of a control. What are the odds if we get this massive something or other people actually use it? If you make something too hard, people won't use it. <coughs> Maybe you want overlapping controls. I want a door lock there and a door lock there. Do you know if you have a computer system that manages credit cards in any way at all, has to be behind two locked doors from the outside world. Yeah. From the outside to the system itself, has to go through two separate doors with different keys. So there's a lot of stuff that's involved. And also, bars carry, on the window. What now? Said, and bars on the windows, right. the windows Ordinary high window. enough and small enough that no human can pass through. It's, it's just amazing some of the stuff. How about periodic review? Do you ever look at what you got and update it? A lot of people don't. Okay. Challenges, complexity. They've been, they've literally been working on replacing our email system since February, but it's very difficult to do. I realize it's now August. Okay, it's very complex. Yeah, it's converting them is taking a very long time. Okay. Okay. Limitations or theoretical limitations. How about complete, complete security is a holy grail. What that mean? Can we ever be totally secure? No. No, it's impossible. I guess I could turn this machine off, unplug it, put it in a safe, but then I guess it could still get wet. Then I have to put it in a plastic box. I was actually reading um, yesterday. You know, I got a Chevy Volt, and I use this fob to work my car. That's what turns it on, opens the door, and everything. And the guy was saying he always goes surfing out in California. And they were asking, what do you do with your key? Because, I mean, it's not like this key you can take in the water. It's this thing. So the guy says, well, he takes it, puts it in a balloon. Gets the air out of the balloon and ties it. Then he puts it inside of a Ziploc bag, gets all the air out of the Ziploc bag, and then seals it. Then puts that inside of another Ziploc bag. So do you think he's totally secure now that he's got this inside a balloon and then two Ziploc bags? No, because no, it could still come out of his pocket and be swallowed by a shark. <laughs> well, he said he puts it inside of his wetsuit. But still, I mean, he's doing a good job, but is it 100% foolproof? No. No. So, no. You might get bit by a shark. It could, and it could swallow it. But darn, I can't drive it to the hospital. Okay. Yeah, it's, uh, it ain't going to happen. Okay. Law and policy. It says law and, and public. Percy. That's, that's, that's supposed to be Percy. Percy cannot keep pace. They can't because they're always paying catch-up. They're always after the fact. I don't know why I didn't catch all these typos. There's a lot of them. There's always typos in my stuff, if you haven't learned that by now. Okay, law and their inter interpretation differ widely. That is a biggie. It's real, uh, there's so much what people believe and what others believe. Okay, investigation and enforcement are difficult. Okay, deregulation issues. How about the telephone system? 
We have SBC, then we had at t then we put them together, and we separated them out again. Now we got this, that, and who knows what. Now we're taking all of our health care, putting them into one stupid ignorant system. It's just Wah. crazy. <laughs> How about shrink wrap versus open source software? Which one's better? You don't know? I mean, they're both good, and they're both bad. Okay? Okay? Domestic economic policy, I mean, that's changing every 35 seconds, so... Something's always changing. It says, the IT industry needs about 1 in 10 employees to be trained in security. Yeah. I mean, Larry Baird today did not know what log off your computer meant. He did not know how to log off his computer. Didn't know. All he knew how to do was shut it down. He's an older man. And but still, the fact is, you know, wonderful guy. Really nice guy. But you don't think there's other people on campus that think the same way he does? Oh, yeah. Oh, I guarantee there are. I guarantee there are. Okay? U.S. government has a deficit of 100,000 IT security professionals. There is tons of openings in this field, people, if you don't know that. Okay? Fewer than 200 professors across the U.S. in academia. There's not that many that teach security. A lot of them teach, like, when you hear networking, they're really teaching Cisco. But they don't go beyond that. Okay, take K-12. through 12. A lot of kids don't want to do this. Uh... Two Saturdays, that was it last year. No, two Saturdays ago, I was in my office up here working, and it was during the orientation, and they had a bunch of students walking down the hallway, just showing them around, and they stopped at my door because my door was open. And I walked out there and said, hey, you know, saying hi to them, the whole big old pile of brand new students. I said, well, how many of you are cybersecurity majors? And one guy raised his hand. And I said, so um, let me guess, liberal arts degrees? And they're all shaking their hands. I'm like, are you working at McDonald's or Wendy's? And the, the, the lady's like, Ken. I'm like, it's true. Liberal arts, you can serve fries or burgers. But, or yeah, paper or plastic. That's yeah, exactly what you're going to get. Yeah, don't sell Walmart short. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> but there's not much out there, okay? Defense in depth. Technology and policy and people to enforce it. You know, I could buy the best firewall in the world. If it's not <coughs> managed or configured correctly, what good is it? Or turned on. Yeah, we're turned on. <laughs> that happens a lot. That happens you a lot. Yes, I have the best of fireball, and it's in perfect condition. I can sell because it it's still in the box. All right. All right. How about this one? This is from the Rose State Gym. I happened to be over the last semester in the locker room. I'm like, huh? I wonder what my password is. Sixteen three twenty. No, but I'm, there was, for some reason there was a bunch of them that day. I don't know if it was between semesters and they were resetting or something. There was tons of these. He almost left the oh. first number, too. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it was close. But it was, you know, it I could probably have written the serial numbers down on all the sticky notes and gone back a couple weeks later and started ripping them off. But that was literally from the gym at Rose State. I, I know Sandy, and she, and she does have to reset the, the combination locks every semester. But it might be a good idea to pull no, the sticky well, notes. <laughs> the person who had it before had, I probably wrote that down and stuck it on the door so that, that could she could go by and... Oh, and write it down, yeah. Well, and change it. Oh. Huh? And then re-register yeah. the... Because they have a notebook that they keep yeah. the padlock. But it's, that is a good place to store it. We know for sure that that goes with that. So yeah. that's good. All right. Password storage. I put a couple of them up here. I use something called lastpass.com. If you, it's free. If you've never used it, I recommend using it. You remember one pass phrase. Mine's like 30 digits long. It's a, it's a phrase, actually. But that's all you have to remember. It does everything else for you. LastPass. I also use Memango, which is good as well. But, what uh, are these for? Storing your passwords. Right, let me show you an example real quick. LastPass is awesome because it, it, it basically automates everything. That, it actually stores it. Okay, I'm going to go to Memango. So what did you put in the um, password area? Oh, that one was still, you don't have the passphrase yet. Okay. Now we got the phrase. Yes, type it in. All you'll do is get into a foreign class. All right. Um, That's ridiculous. That's not completely And what's cool about this is... <laughs> Back when I was in the military, I'd say the last four years I rode a bicycle everywhere. Literally, 
I lived on base. I rode a bicycle to work every day. I rode a bicycle to Rover State to go to school every single day. Then I stopped riding my bicycle. I literally have no idea where it is. So if you ever find a bike out there somewhere, a random bike, that might be the combination. <laughs> so I stored it. But so, you know, there's lots of stuff on there. But you can store pretty much anything you want in here. The last pass actually works a little better. Okay. So how did 